Welcome back to our Human Resources 101 curriculum. Today we are going to talk about a very touchy subject. It's so touchy that some of my colleagues will literally cringe when they hear the words performance management. There's so much emotion around performance management. In our consulting work, we work with managers who literally hate the process of performance management. Then we work with some executives who feel it's a must. And we work with employees, depending on their experience, have a variety of opinions around performance management. Nowadays, there's also a lot of misconception around performance management. More and more multinationals are upgrading or updating their performance management processes, which is making people feel like we should all do away with performance management altogether. So today we're going to talk about a couple of questions we continue to get from our clients. The number one question is whether we actually need performance management or not. Now, whether you're a business, for-profit or non-profit, this is a question you should never answer with a no. Yes, we do need performance management. Why? Because any organization, by definition, is an organization of mission. Whether you are in the business of selling shoes, making iPhones, delivering goods or services, or you are actually educating farmers in an unknown land for your nonprofit business, there is an end goal in mind. And so the organization actually needs to think about setting and measuring certain goals with that mission in mind. The second question we always get, people will say, but it sucks to evaluate someone on past performance. And that's absolutely right. Not only it's a painful process to look back and evaluate someone on their past performance, it's actually a disservice for the employees as well as the managers who get asked to be a supervisor and a mentor at the same time. My IO psychologist colleagues will appreciate this. In 1960, there was a book published by McGregor. It was called The Human Side of Enterprise. In there, the author made a statement saying, a judge cannot be a coach at the same time. Now, we didn't internalize that statement as the business world. But nowadays, with neuroscience being in the picture, we are actually learning a brain cannot handle two conflicting messages at the same time. So when we tell managers we want you to evaluate someone on past performance, and yet at the same time we want you to coach someone for future performance, it's actually confusing for the managers. So what do we do? Well, we need to embrace feedback. And feedback not as a mechanism of giving a critique of someone's past performance, but as a way of learning. Many organizations that thrive, that do well in productivity and innovation, approach feedback as a way of learning, as a way of making the end product better, and as a way of improving their working relationships. So this is what we need to do. We need to educate our employees, our management population, even our stakeholders that we work with around how to effectively work with feedback, how to receive and give feedback at the same time. The third question we often get is around career advancement. And this is where coaching comes in. For many years now, we have been thinking about coaching as a way of helping someone out of a particular situation. So for example, if we had an employee that was underperforming or on a performance improvement plan, we would assign a coach to them. Now, helping someone out of a problem is not coaching. It's actually consulting. Coaching is about helping the individual realize possibilities, connect with their insights so that they can envision a different future. In fact, research these days tell us that if we focus the individual on the problem itself, it actually shrinks their capability to think. It paralyzes them. Whereas if we help them focus on the future in a different way of using their abilities, it puts them in a growth mindset which opens up capabilities for them. It actually enables them to learn and also supports their transformation process. So we need to start thinking about coaching in a different way and career advancement as a way of nurturing and developing our employees. So there you have it. Those are the top questions we get around performance management. So if you get clear around your mission, embrace feedback and embrace coaching as a way of nurturing your employees, that's wonderful. If you can top that with effective training for your managers and employees, 
as well as a good process to support, and perhaps a technology that's reliable and user-friendly, all the better. If you would like to hear more about future of work topics and how to lead human resources management in the 21st century, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.